Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to create a nail design using just one gel polish, believe it or not. The rest of it is going to be glitters, charms, crystals, and the big showstopper today will be my stamping plate from what is it? Moe London actually. It's one of their trolls plate number 06 which I'll show you guys later on in the video. Here quickly I'm showing you the different stamping polishes that I'm using and they're basically all strictly born pretty. They are super affordable, so easy to use, incredibly beginner friendly so if you're new to stamping or have always been thinking about stamping or wanting to get into stamping, highly highly recommend picking up their gel, uh, not gel polishes sorry, their stamping polishes. So you can pick them up on Amazon, you can pick them up up on Born Pretty's website. You can go and get them from AliExpress. I think they might still be there. They're literally all over the place. So hopefully wherever you shop, they should hold some of these stamping polishes and I would highly advise picking them up. So I'm just going in with that base color. It's this kind of milky, kind of yellowy undertone. It's kind of giving a bit of a nude and I'm going to apply them across all of those nails and pop them into the lamp. I will go ahead and do second layer off camera of course and then we can crack on with the best part of the video <laughs> which is the nail design. So the whole play, um, I'm getting kind of the 70s vibes, kind of the groovy hippie kind of nail design. So I am going to try to pick up the stamping polishes and all the colours that I'm doing today around that kind of theme. So um, here's the glitter actually that we're going to use. It's a gold glitter and it's so pretty. You all know I love my fine glitters. I feel like recently I haven't been picking them up as much or I could be lying. It might be that I've just personally haven't done <laughs> a couple of videos recently with glitter but who knows maybe you guys have been seeing a couple from me. But it's one of those glitters I don't pick up too much just because I don't often do full on nude, um, that kind of colour shades. I usually go for pinks and blues and purples. Those are like my three go-to colours. Here's the stamping plate. How gorgeous is that stamping plate? Absolutely beautiful. Love it so much. I've been ironing down this one for so long to do. So I'm quite happy I finally got around to actually creating something with it. So I am going to be including pretty much the majority of the stamping footage. I feel like it's quite therapeutic, relaxing to watch, and it's so fun to do, funny enough. I've been watching some of the Maniology stamping channel, and funny enough, they've actually started creating content around kind of like meditation with stamping and kind of that kind of content, which I thought was so cool. And it is so therapeutic to stamp. It really is. Um, it definitely isn't when you're really trying to create something and it's not working you get really angry about it it's not very good then but when you're kind of going in with an open mind and you're not trying to achieve anything specific you just want to have some fun and create some art then this is so so fun to do so honestly highly recommend try and stamping it's really fun <laughs> so going back to the plate itself for this first nail i'm going to stamp a couple of those flowers that we've got in the center of the plate the three different flowers one is larger and then we've got two slightly smaller ones but the two are slightly different kind of shaped flowers so at the top i'm going to stamp the biggest in the pink and then i'm going to place the two little ones next to the big one with the two different other shades that we've got going on and then for the bottom because we can't create that same kind of like half whatever you would call it actually I don't know how you'd call it but you can't create exactly what you've created at the top you just want to fill in the bottom so I'm going to flip the colors around a little bit so since the big flower was pink at the top we're going to do orange for this one and the same thing with the other little ones as well so that's that one done. I am going to do an ombre stamping here. So that's a new technique, I guess. For some of you, it might be. For some of you, it might not be. It's not something I do too often, but I do find it quite easy to do. So I've included it in the video and tried to give it a go as well. Especially as we're using so many different colours, I thought it's only right that we try and attempt an ombre. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pick up the word where it says, let your colours shine, and I'm placing the three different colours next to each other there, and very carefully and slowly I'm going to swipe. If you do it way too quickly, if you do it kind of, yeah, too quickly and maybe even too much, you will end up just blending the colours together too much, and then you end up with a big old mess. So just do a couple of swipe, very controlled swiping, and kind of re every time you swipe, just make sure you swipe in the same way, if that makes sense. Because you will have residue on your scraper and you want to make sure you don't end up going over a pink area with the orange on your scraper. And then you're going to mix up and contaminate the colours and it's just going to be a big old mess. So I really like the ombre, so I thought let me go again and do another ombre. This one wasn't the best, you'll notice in the yellow bit, we have some lines that we didn't really want, but that's fine. 
it ended up working in the end actually and if you have any large areas that you want to isolate and get rid of you can use a limp roller which i've used today i love my limp roller honestly love i get mine from ikea they have really cool big packs you can actually get like a whole four pack of the refillable little sticky bits <laughs> from there so i have like three packs and i keep using them they're so useful so useful and because they're so large you can actually use them for quite a long time just make sure you don't leave them chilling out in the open because it will collect dust and fluffs and hairs that are floating around so make sure you don't do that so now i am picking up one of those little trolls and there's actually quite a few to pick from you have four to pick from but i wanted to go in with that one because i kind of wanted to color it in so I'm once again using the same three colours that we used earlier, the orange, pink and yellow. I decided to colour in the body in the yellow. Then once I'm happy with that, I will go ahead and colour the little flower orange and the pink is going to be the hair. When it comes to reverse stamping, you want to make sure you're using a fairly thin brush. That's just because sometimes there might be areas that are quite hard to get to, such as that flower, for example, there in the, in the hair. It's quite thin and small. So if you have a large brush, it can be quite difficult to get into the little lines. And of course, you don't want to go over the line because that's just going to ruin the image and everything. Another little tip to maybe give as well is try to make sure your brush is somewhat loaded. You don't want to be dragging on... Um, with your brush on that stamper because then you end up actually ruining the outline that you've picked up with your stamper i've done that plenty of times when i first started reverse stamping and i never understood why but i've noticed that it's because i know i had enough of my brush so if you end up finding yourself scraping down the little lines that you already have on the scraper on your scraper on your stamper you will actually end up just scraping it with your brush so you kind of want to use your brush as like a little little guide, little kind of, you kind of want to float the stamping polish. It's basically what I'm trying to say in a long winded way. <laughs> just kind of glide your stamping polish, don't drag it on your scraper. So I'm just finishing up the hair there. You'll notice I'm using, because of the fact that I'm using a lot of stamping polish, I do like to leave it for a little while just to kind of let it dry a little bit. Since we're using stamping polish, not stamping polish, gel polish. I'm getting so confused, I'm so sorry guys. Since we are using gel polish, it leaves a tacky layer so no matter how long you leave your images chilling and drying it will always transfer over just because of that tacky layer that the gel polish leaves so in theory if you have a lot of um images that you want to pick up and you have a bunch of jelly pick your upper stampers <laughs> you could pick them all up at once in one go and then later stamp them down when you're ready if you wanted to so that could be actually a really cool technique if you're doing press on nails for people actually you if you already know what kind of images you need and all of that good stuff you could basically pre-plan and pre-prepare for your nail design and get all that images stamped on your stamper ready to stamp down once you get your base colors down and all of that stuff so there's um ways to go around it of course if you're using normal stamping polish then unfortunately that wouldn't be the case unless you apply a tacky sticky layer i know that you can possibly get from manuology i think so for this nail, I have some of these like hex glitters. They're kind of clear, they've got this pinky reflection to it and I thought, let me cure that using a base coat and then let's stamp over it. So I don't often do layered kind of glittery backgrounds. So I thought let's do that and give that a go. I've been watching quite a lot of TikTok recently and there's this amazing girl on there. I've completely forgotten her name, but I'm sure if you're on TikTok, you've already seen her for sure when it comes to nail art. She does very detailed nail art. She does little characters and everything like that. And she quite often actually draws and paints and does all of her amazing work on top of shiny glittery sparkly background so i thought let me give that a go it's not often that i do that i also noticed not a lot of companies actually create a lot of glittery gel polish so i love madame glam for example but i don't find that they have a lot of sparkly gel polishes um every month they come out with collections and it's very rare that you might find a actual glittery gel polish in there so that's quite interesting i wonder if it's just because it's quite hard to create those gels who knows but yeah i just don't see a lot of them so i thought let's chuck on some glitter and see what happens so that's what we're doing today and i actually quite like how it came out it's really nice we are later going to actually matte top coat these nails so it's quite nice to see the glitter kind of peeping through behind the stamping that we've stamped down so there's a lot of different images on that stamping plate that i really liked some of the words some of the flower outlines and all of that stuff so i'm kind of just chucking it onto the nail also almost like what would you call those nails like is it 
oh I don't know <laughs> I wanted to say garbage nails but I don't know if that's the right word where you've kind of got a lot of different stuff and you just chuck it on that nail and see what happens that's kind of the nail I was going for so now that that's done we've got one nail left just blank blank chilling that's where we're going to place our crystals and charms and that kind of stuff and I'm going in with a matte top coat so top coat these are definitely if you got to top coated that glittery nail that would look even more cooler actually than what I've done here it will make that glitter pop even more along with that stamping that we've created popped on there as well so just top coat these as you can see I have absolutely no smudging I've noticed when I top coat I only find the black smudging the most so I always kind of quickly float over the top coat on the matte stamping and quickly just pop it into the lamp <laughs> but when it comes to glossy I've never actually had this smudge at all so now that they are beautiful and matte and i absolutely love the, how these came out we've got two more nails to just quickly crack on and pop some crystals and charms so for this nail as you can see i left a gap between where the little troll is and where we've placed our little flowers at the bottom and that's because we're going to chuck some crystals on there to kind of create that little separation between the two images you could have placed it on top like literally as if it's standing on the little flowers but then i personally would have wanted to do maybe like a black line or a white line with some gel polish just to kind of give that little separation just to kind of i don't know i just always feel like there's something missing so i am just doing a little line there with the ab crystals i will pop some caviar beads in between those crystals as well but that will be off camera i shall not be boring you guys with that stuff <laughs> And then for this nail, we're just doing a line down the center with our rhinestone glue gel from McCart. And then I'm going to place that beautiful yellow flower in the center. And I did the biggest whoopsie on this planet. Ideally, I would have wanted to place that flower first, then cured it just because it's so large and it's moving about. And then I would have wanted to finish off the crystal placement. But silly me, already placed the rhinestone glue gel down. So I couldn't, I could have wiped it down, but then I just didn't want to mess it all up and yeah, I just had to work with it, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do now is place a couple of cover beads down that line, just a couple. You want to make sure it's the same amount on both sides, so if you place five on one side, try and do the five on the other side. And then once I've placed however many I decided to, let me see, one, two, three, oh it was five. <laughs> then you want to place a AB crystal down, you can place anything, you can place even a yellow crystal to match up with the whole yellowy, orangey, pinky kind of theme if you wanted to. I was just going for the AB crystal just because we've placed a couple earlier on that troll nail as well, so just to match that in. And then just finish the nail off with the cover beads at the end as well and just pull it all the way down to the end of the nail. You can use any tools or anything you want just to straighten up the cover bead placement. I just did that off camera but I'll show you at the end in a second how it all ends up turning out all together. Here's me just finishing up the cover bead placement. Go, go, go. And then pop it into the lamp, of course. You could ideally probably do this before top coating if you wanted to. But here's the final result. I hope you guys liked it. I love how they came out. I have all my discount codes in the description for you guys to check them out with the Madam Glam and Moby London product links. So I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'd love to see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.